This first guy I'm going to bring up, I, uh, I have worked with uh, in numerous states, uh, from New York to uh, drunk out of my mind. And uh, <laughs> this guy has uh, traveled the globe plying his comedy wares. He has his own show uh, every other Wednesday over at the Comedy Connection in Boston. He's a fine comedian, soon to be pals with you guys. Please, a nice round of applause for Mr. Tony V. Keep that going for Mike McDonald. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Mike McDonald. Thanks, that's great. I haven't done a thing. Doesn't this kind of look like Elvis's headstone? Come on, bury me deep. Come on, baby. Bury the king. Oh, can you guys see me with the mic stand in the way? Is that going to be a problem? No, you think it'll be all right? Okay, because I don't want you to miss any of this, you know. Well, the guy was kind of funny, but we couldn't see him, you know. How's that, a little bit better? Good. Nice to be here. I don't know why I say that. Oh, I do know why I say that, because I was in Framingham last night. <laughs> Grew up here in Boston. It's not actually to say that I've grown up yet. Uh, my body matured in Boston. Okay, my body sort of overmatured. <laughs> I have a feeling that I'm the size I am is because when I was a kid, I used to color outside the lines. <laughs> I'm not a psychologist, I just tell jokes. I don't know, it could be true. You know, it's fine. They just try to get me to go, to go do a show up in Maine. Anyone ever been to Maine? Yeah, you like Maine? Yeah, I don't like Maine primarily because it's the woods. And I do not like the woods because I could be mistaken for game. <laughs> See, all I would need is some guy named Earl with a plaid hat and a gun. It would be all over for me. <laughs> I don't know, he's big and hairy, so we just shot at him. <laughs> you don't need that grief in your life. You know? Not if you're me, anyway. So, uh, do any of you hunt? Do we have any hunters, perhaps? Good. See, you're all fine humans. That's gay. I like that. I was talking to a guy the other night. I'm doing a show, and I go, do you hunt? He goes, yes, I hunt. And I said, what do you hunt? He said, ducks. I said, ooh, you vicious outdoorsman, you. <laughs> I don't know what it is with hunter guys, too. Anytime, they, like, hunting, they always do this. Yeah, I hunt. <laughs> what does this mean? I don't know. I just do it. I'm a hunter. <laughs> okay, don't throw anything out. Just talk to me. Yeah, I hunt. You know? So I'm talking to this guy. I say, well, do you like to kill things? He says, no, that's not why I hunt. We don't hunt to kill things. We hunt to feel superior as man, to track the beast in our own habitat and feel one with nature. I say, well, then that's great. You ought to go hunting and don't bring a gun. Just sneak up on the animals and go, ha ha, could have shot you. <laughs> See, that way you could track the same animal for a week. Ha <laughs> ha, could have got you again. <laughs> You'd finally catch up with the duck and find him hiding behind a tree going, oh, please get a gun, please. <laughs> What's the point? We've been at this for a month. <laughs> I was driving around out in the woods the other day, saw something I never saw before in my life. I see a sign tacked on a barn, simply reads, Pony Rides, $5. So I drove up and I handed the guy five bucks, and he put a little horse in the back seat of my car. <laughs> Said, have him back by six. <laughs> I'm not going to do with a pony for four hours. You know, you know. Oh, I don't know. So I was driving around, I go into a Dunkin' Donuts. I know, hard to believe, me and a Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> Yeah, you go into a donut shop around here for coffee, you would expect to spend about two or three minutes, right? Depending on the nationality of the person behind the counter. <laughs> Whether or not they have full command of the English language, you know. It got much worse for me. I got into the Dunkin' Donuts and I got behind one of those women that are in every donut shop in the nation doing the god-awful thing of trying to make up her mind to buy a dozen donuts. You know the people of whom I speak, you do. And it, don't, you should not get upset because it's not a sexist statement. I love everybody and it might not even be women. Might be aliens dressed as women. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. <laughs> One thing I am damn sure of, though, it ain't guys. Because guys only get sent into Dunkin' Donuts on Sunday morning. And they don't want to be in there any more than you want them in there. Guy walks into Dunkin' Donuts, woman goes, Well, what kind of donuts would you like? I don't give a shit, give me the donuts. <laughs> 
Look, lady, I don't care, right? They're donuts, they're bad for you. Coach is open, the football game's on. Give me the goddamn donuts I want out. <laughs> you get behind one of these women, you are there for the day. <laughs> say, well, let's see, how many do I have? Well, geez, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, you know, I need a crawler, I need a jelly. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> are those fresh? Did I say one of those? Oh, yeah, Meg's coming over. I don't <laughs> Can I fit a muffin in there? <laughs> If they're like, oh, they donuts, lady. Take them and screw. Get out. <laughs> oh. I went to a wedding last week because I ran out of matches. <laughs> You're a big hit with your friends later. <laughs> when you need a light, here's Bob and Carol. <laughs> you have to be careful because I went to one of those weddings where they have the traditional orchestras, the guys with the ruffly shirts, and they played a lot of those line dances, and a bunch of large people got on the dance floor and did that circle Greek dance, made a whirlpool and sucked in the band. <laughs> Not real pretty. Oh, you guys have a nice 1986, by the way? I don't know if I asked that. You happy with the, no? You happy with the new uh, seatbelt law? No. no. See, you're like me. You're good Americans, and if you want to hurl yourself from a car going 60 miles an hour against a tree and become a splat that they have to get off the pavement with a spatula, it's your right. You should do what I do. I have a t-shirt with a belt painted on it. <laughs> Looks funny. Well, you could use the universal excuse. Officer, I couldn't buckle my seatbelt. It wouldn't fit over my girlfriend's head. <laughs> Moan if you will, you all know what I was talking about. A couple of you got caught at the toe bolts every now and again. <laughs> I told you we should have went to the exact change. <laughs> uh, I stopped for speeding quite a bit on the highway. I don't know if anyone has this trouble. I love state troopers, because when they stop you, they instantly turn into your mother. You feel like you're 10 again, you get stopped for speeding. They always come up and ask those questions that they already know the answer to. The guy comes up and goes, uh, excuse me, son. You know why I stopped you? Um, oh. Oh. Jeez, no I don't. Can I go? Yeah. I was driving around. I bought my dad's car. My dad's a complete lunatic. I don't know how, how this happened. He wasn't when I was a kid. But all of a sudden he snapped. I don't know what... I, get, he, he, I bought his car. He's got one of those big white Bonneville dad cars. You know... The kind that they give you when you become a dad. <laughs> they, you know, they well, you got stuff to protect now. Why don't you here? Take the big one. You know, it's got a, it's a pretty big car. It doesn't have cruise control. It has a cruise director. <laughs> they play shuffleboard in the trunk. I don't know how they work, you know. So I get in my dad's car, and I notice attached to the dashboard, he's got a compass. Has anyone seen these in a car? Yeah, it it's like, looks like a little R2-D2 unit with some goop in it and stuff, you know. And I'm thinking to myself, my dad's 62 years old. Where the hell is he possibly going to go in a Bonneville that he needs a compass? <laughs> All of a sudden, the nation's highways are no good for this man. You know, I'm going to find him and my mother bushwhacking through the Medford woods in a Bonneville. <laughs> my mother looking for moss on the wrong side of the tree. <laughs> Next, they're going to be taking up spelunking. <laughs> Cave exploration. <laughs> oh, thank. Yeah, I just, just thought I'd point it out because no, I learned it last week. Well, you know, that we'll get into stalactites and stalagmites later. I don't know which is which. I don't know. Oh, I tried phone sex last week. Got my dick stuck on the nine. So I called operator assistance. She came right over and said, thank you for using AT&T. Okay, I'm going to go. But listen, you guys have been real nice. Uh, before I turn you back to Michael, I'm going to do that. I'd like to uh, give you a little bit of advice and then ask you a favor. The advice I will give you is uh, please don't ever die on the highway. Uh, like after a show like this, you'll be driving home. Because, you know, basically because there's no glory in it. <laughs> you know, you'll die on the highway and they'll go, well, 400 people died this week. You know, what's the point? You know, if you feel like you want to do some damage to yourself, what you might want to do is uh, rent a dirigible, get an axe, take a couple of nuns with you. <laughs> 
you know, because my attitude is go out kicking and screaming because that's how you came in, you know. <laughs> you know. And also, please do keep supporting comedy because God knows you don't want me showing up at your house with Tupperware and stuff now, do you? <laughs> it's all right. Good night. Tony V! Protector of the universe.